uh, it is a net protein utilization. So, uh, what is amino acid score? It is the concentration of each amino acid in a given test protein expressed as a percentage of the amino acid in the reference protein. So, definition of NPU, biological value, uh, amino acid score, pura SPM wala, bahut garbad hai. Wo sab clear karke jana exam ko. Nahi toh, uh, dikkat ho jayega. Huh? Now, amino acid score is what? NPU is nitrogen retained by the body by nitrogen intake into 100. Will give you the net protein utilization is what you need to remember. So, it is Andhra Pradesh, Ragi Santati. So, Ragi is utilized, Pellagra is very common in this area. Whenever the disease frequency is measured over a period of decades, then you basically call it as a secular trend. Influenza like viruses, seasonal trend. Time gap between primary and secondary cases is called serial interval. And uh, Multi-purpose health worker scheme. All these six schemes. Who introduced? What did they say? Committees, you must know. So, Dr. Kartar Singh Committee. Then, Gulen Barry is what? Descending or ascending paralysis. Huh? It is post-infectious polyradiculopathy. Ascending is also there, no? Oh, I think uh, uh, except is uh, should be there and then answer should be made B. No, sorry. Eryflexic paralysis is a known feature. Eryflexic is known feature and uh, uh, yeah, uh, Bubble and bladder involvement is not a early feature. Actually, B and C are wrong. A and D are true. The two answers. But what features, if they are there, they are against the diagnosis of the Gulenberry is a very important question. So, what are they, doctor? Gulenberry is supposed to be what? Polyradiculopathy. Radicals are a part of what? LMN, not UMN. Upper motor neuron nahi hoga. Post infectious polyneuritis involving the radicals which are leaving the cardiac vena. So, any pyramidal signs like Bevinsky, don't consider that paralysis as a bullet barry if pyramidal signs are present. Pyramidal is a sign of UMN. Agree? Huh? So, the neurology. Jala speed me day to if you didn't read you will completely be feeling insecure. Okay, doctor. We have in general medicine uh, around uh, 20 hours on neurology in the online video library. Please take a chance to review uh, neuro anatomy and neuro neurology. Eh? So that will give you confidence. Neurology is one subject easily understood when taught by somebody. Right? And few areas in endocrinology also worth the listening rather than reading. Reading becomes slower. Forensic like subjects don't get taught by anybody. It's enjoyable to read the forensic textbook, how people will be killed, what are all methods available for killing, sexual instincts, sexual perversions. It's a very wonderful novel among all subjects. So uh, but medicine may some areas, neurology. Okay, so just review the online video library, you will be more uh, understanding it. Pyramidal signs, asymmetric motor deficit, sharp sensory level. Uske upar, uske upar, sab kuch hai, uske niche kuch bhi nahi hai. Sensory, sensation, sharp level. That is a feature of transverse myelitis, not Gulenberry. Early splinteric involvement, if the bubble and bladder get affected very early, it is not Gulenberry. There are the important signs that negate the diagnosis of the Gulenberry is what you have to basically remember. 
Now, doctor, similarly, this is also an important table. What are all the situations where plasmapheresis is used as a treatment? Bullen barrier is because of what? Some viral infection has come, it has cross find our own immune system and autoantibodies against our own gangliocide receptors on the neurons have developed and that led to development of neuritis. Perjure those autoantibodies by doing plasmapheresis. Hence, plasmapheresis is useful. Good posture is what condition? Anti-glomerular basement autoantibodies. Purge out those antibodies using plasmapheresis. What is myasthenia gravis? Anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies. Purge out them by using plasmapheresis. All indications of plasmapheresis. You have to be hundred percent sure. Low pitch. Pitch is what, doctor? Pitch has more to do with frequency. Low pitch is high amplitude. So, what are low pitched auscultatory sounds? Basically, all of them, but not ejection click. Low pitch, low pitch with high amplitude. Will you use diaphragm or bell of the stethoscope? Bell is used for high amplitude, low pitch sounds. Right? Low amplitude, high pitch sounds, you will be using the diaphragm. Mid-diastolic rumble of the mitral stenosis is what kind of sound? High amplitude, low pitch sound it is. So, you will be using bell. Always high amplitude, low pitch sounds are better felt, palpated rather than auscultated. If you auscultate, don't use your routine diaphragm, you use the bell. That is the principle. Mid-diastolic rumble, sunne ke liye, aap diaphragm hi aap bell, kis ka istemal karte? Bell ka istemal karte. Will you tightly press or you will lightly press? Lightly press. Mid-diastolic rumble ke liye. But aortic regurgitation mein, you will have a early diastolic, early diastolic murmur. That is a, Low amplitude, high pitched sound. There you have to use the bell in the neo aortic area. Too much cardiology, suddenly extempore, you will not catch where I am talking from. Huh? So, better leave it ourselves. S3, S4, cardiac knock. Pericardial knock in cardiac, pericarditis, they are all basically felt better than heard better. So, they are all what? High amplitude, low pitch sounds. Ejection click, early diastolic murmur of the aortic regurgitation, they are all what? Heard better than being felt. Because they are of the low amplitude and high pitch is what you need to basically remember. More easy to remember the things is like this doctor, your breath sounds are there, no? What do you like to call breath sounds as? Low amplitude, high frequency sound they are. Breath sounds are there. Will you listen with the diaphragm or not? You have to listen with diaphragm. Will you listen with bell? No. Early diastolic murmur of aortic regurgitation, ejection, clicks, they are all like breath sounds. Simple way to remember. Right? Now, uh, one more thing about systolic ejection click. What is the meaning of ejection click? Whenever left ventricle pumps the blood into the Iota or right ventricle into pulmonary artery. Pulmonic valve and aortic valve they open, no? When that opens, it makes a click. Whenever ventricles are pushing it with high force into the uh, pulmonary artery and iota. When they need to do that? If there is aortic stenosis or pulmonic stenosis, ventricle need to develop a lot of pressure to push the blood into iota and pulmonary artery. That creates the Ejection click is fortunate to remember. So, what, are the, what is the important uh, uh, point to, about uh, ejection click? If you take aortic stenosis, it can be supravalvular aortic stenosis, valvular aortic stenosis, subvalvular like hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy is there no, there is obstruction below the aortic valve. Click is a feature 
only when the aortic stenosis is valvular. When it is supravalvular or subvalvular, there is no click. The presence of an aortic ejection click is an indicator of a valvular stenosis is what you need to basically remember. Why? When the left ventricle pumps the blood with a lot of force below the aortic valve and aortic valve open snaps, that creates that cooing sound which is the ejection click. Right? That's the point. Once more, how do you differentiate pulmonary and aortic ejection clicks is a very favorite question of the exam. We will go into cardiology at a different mode. This is too short a session for that. And the positive vasculitis, church stress, classically. Then Pianka, Siyanka. Siyanka hota hai, Pudinase 3, Pianka hota hai, Myloperoxidase. Myloperoxidase. Okay? So that's what you need to remember. So, Carotid body tumor. How will you remember in exam hall? Pianka is myeloperoxidase. Who is the next PM candidate of Congress? Priyanka. So Priyanka is PM. PM is M is myeloperoxidase. Some some uh, easy method to remember. Huh? So because already CM is there. Priyanka is what? Sorry. There is no CM, CP. So, CNK is proteinase 3. The other one is proteinase 3. Right. Carotid body tumor. Typically, people living in high altitude and family history will be positive. Never try to do FNAC on this highly vascular tumor called potato tumor. Carotid body tumor, chemodectoma. Acid secreting cells are basically parietal cells. Acute pandenitis, whenever hypercalcemia is there, it carries a very poor prognosis is what you need to remember. And uh, nosocomial infections, they are due to the aspiration, endoscopy, diabetes like situations, they are all the predisposing factors, not smoking. Then iron deficiency anemia, earliest change is what? Whenever you are treating, it, I mean, whenever iron deficiency anemia is there, bone marrow will try to compensate by increased erythropoiesis in the form of reticulocytosis. Actually, iron therapy, no? Response to iron therapy, we should say. Not uh, iron deficiency anemia. Huh? Right. Pink frothy sputum is pulmonary edematous sputum. And anxiety like presentation. Is a feature of hyperthyroidism, fewer chromocytoma, coronary artery disease. Even coronary artery disease can present like a anxiety like a clinical presentation. If you take the LFT, alkaline phosphatase, can it elevate even in the absence of jaundice? Definitely because alkaline phosphatase can be bone B egg source. There are good sources of alkaline phosphatase. Ke liye. Placental alkaline phosphatase is there. So, that's the reason. Not always, it need to be a liver alkaline phosphatase. Gilbert is a very benign form of uh, jaundice. It is called isolated hyperbilirubinemia. What is the meaning? Only jaundice. All LFT are normal. Person who is starved, excessively exercised, fever, they all lead to appearance of the jaundice. But if you do their LFT, all of the LFT are normal. That is called isolated hyperbilirubinemia of the Gilbert is what need to be remembered. Coming to the liver disease, anti-kidney microsomal antibodies, LKM antibodies are typically found in the patients who are having chronic active hepatitis. Is a true statement. Anti-mitochondrial antibodies where we will see primary biliary cirrhosis. Don't confuse that with chronic active hepatitis. TBC is different from CAH. Okay, doc. Now, complex partial epilepsy. Complex means loss of consciousness. So, they are all basically what temporal lobe seizures. Patient can have an aura of an abdominal discomfort. 
whenever they are having throwing complex partial seizures. They can have gustatory hallucinations, olfactory hallucinations. They all can occur whenever there is a complex partial seizure. Intracranial calcifications, there are few causes including tuberous sclerosis, toxoplasmiosis, craniopharyngioma, TB, etc, etc. Zero order, first order. What is the difference between the two? First order means with every half-life, a proportion of the drug is metabolized. Zero order means a fixed amount of drug is metabolized. 100 become 50, 50 become 25, 25 become 12.5. What do you say? First order. 100 become 95, 95 become 90, 90 become 85. Kya bolte aap? Zero order. Zero order is slower, first order is faster. Most of the drugs they behave first order. Few drugs they behave zero order. Which drugs? You need to master that. So I leave the literature for you. Huh? D is also correct, you want to say. Alcohol metabolism, you want to say is zero order. Alcohol metabolism is a zero order. Once more, there are two kinds of alcohol consumption. Low volume, high volume. It differs. High volume consumption of the ethanol may, it starts behaving zero order. Initially, it behaves first order, but still D also is a possible truth. Hmm? Possible truth. Okay. Then, uh, the rate of metabolism is proportional to the drug concentration if it is first order. That is an object true statement. What is a safe drug in pregnancy? Methyl dopa. Methyl dopa, clonidine also. They are all centrally acting antihypertensives, are very safe in pregnancy. Which is metabolically active metabolite? Dizipam, evitriptyline, zidovudine, etc. Zidovudine is an inactive prodrug. And it is metabolized to zidovudine triphosphate, which is then the active drug. And similarly, nor dizipam is the metabolite of dizipam, which is further metabolized to oxazepam, and both of them are active benzodiazepines. Similarly, heroin and codeine, propylol, imipramine, etc., etc. There are some drugs which are called prodrugs that require activation. What are they? Cortisone need to become hydrocortisone. Prednisone need to become prednisolone. Cyclophosphamide need to become phosphoramide mustard. Azathioprine becomes mercaptopurine. Inalapril become inalapril act. Then only it is active. So don't confuse between prodrugs versus drugs whose metabolites are active drugs. That means here drug is itself is active, its metabolite is also active. Yaha pro drug is inactive, but its metabolite then become active. Oh to farak. Aapke samaj mein aage na? Now, drugs causing pulmonary fibrosis. Yeah, Balina rightly said D also is correct, correct for the earlier question. Pulmonary fibrosis. Amidiron, methotrexate, radiotherapy. Busulfan, chloramphenicol, bleomycin, nitrofurantoin, malphalon, baraquat, they are all the ones which lead to pulmonary fibrosis. Crystal deposition arthropathies. Negatively pyrifringent are urate crystals, positively are calcium pyrophosphate crystals of pseudo -gab. Then coming to the various autoantibodies is Castori Kai. Anti law is jogrin, anti centromere is crust, anti joe is polymycitis, anti ribonucleotide, anti RNP antibodies, mixed connectivity should is ordered. So, anti cardiolipin is found either in cardio in case of the primary antiphospholipid syndrome or in SLE, it can be found. Pulses bisphenians can be seen in HOCM, AR, AS plus AR. Any of them you can see. Essential hypertension may, patients will say, early morning when they woke up, when they have a severe headache, they say, maybe I forgot BP tablets yesterday. So they can recognize 
hypertension is a common, I mean headache is a common feature. Localize it to the occipital area is a typical hypertensive headache. Periorbital headache is cluster headache. Hemicranial headache is migraine. Tight band like headache is tension headache. So all headaches doctor, hmm? you need to master. Left ventricular hypertrophy is not a feature of car pulmonary. Car pulmonary may right failure is there. So right ventricular hypertrophy is what you typically come across. Malignant hypertension lead to hypertensive retinopathy. Renal failure, it lead to microangiopathic hemolysis leading to development of hemolytic anemia are the presenting features of malignant hypertension. Atrial fibrillation, P waves are absent, irregular RR intervals will be there, they are all the features. And uh, cholestasis, there are few drugs which lead to. We all use amoxicillin, clavulanate for every respiratory infection. But if you overuse it in a patient who is already having some amount of residual liver disease, they lead to cholestatic jaundice. Very fulminant form of hepatic failure can result. Clavulanate, sometimes, huh? you should never forget. Clavulanate, penicillin, cystogen, erythromycin, chloropromazine. They are all known to lead to development of cholestatic picture in the liver is what you need to remember. Upper GI bleeding commonly is because of the peptic ulceration, peptic ulceration. Then how will you prevent the re-bleed? It is the propranolol beta blocker which will decrease the portal pressure. Then what is the long acting beta blocker you use as a prophylaxis to prevent bleeding in portal hypertension? Nadalol. Nadalol is a long acting beta block. 38 year old, cardiovascular history is there and using NSIs. Any NSI usage will lead to development of NSI analgesic nephropathy. You can use ultrasound or CT scan to make a diagnosis. When will you use ultrasound? Whenever a patient complains of sudden flank pain due to the sloughed papillae leading to urinary obstruction due to analgesic nephropathy, then you will use ultrasound. Okay? Now, high serum thyroxine concentrations. Typically, uh, in a normal newborn, there is a rise in the TSH because the abrupt change in the environmental temperature and that generally returns within 48 hours. Don't over diagnose it as a hypothyroidism in a neonate and start him on thyroid supplementation and make him truly thyrotoxic. Right? Then, one question on hyperlipidemias. Without that, there is no paper, doctor. One question. What is type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4? Everything you must master. So, glucose intolerance is an associated feature that you see in the patients with combined hyperlipidemia but not the people with hypercholesterolemia. This session is too short and you need to review where do you find xanthomas which is due to the problem in the B48, B100, all those funda you need to master. Now, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, there is a craving but craving for the pure water pure water, not for the salt. Already they are in a hyperosmolar state, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Why? Since ADH is not working, antidiuretic is not working, they are in a diuretic state, losing water. And hyperosmolar, why will they crave for salt? They won't crave for salt, they will crave for water, is what need to be understood. Achondroplasia, it is basically, uh, can be diagnosed radiologically at birth very much. It is honorable dominant condition. Short limbs, normal trunk is the typical combination in a contraplasic baby. 12 year old, bowing of the tibia and uh, osteomalacia is suspected. What do you find in osteomalacia? Pseudo fractures, loser's jones, etc, etc. 
Rotavirus infection. They use the rotazine to detect the virus particles, which is an enzyme linked assay. 16 year old, parents are worried that he lost 3 cages in the last 6 weeks and he has some problems of lower abdominal pain. The entire clinical vignette talks about threadworm infection, which is very common in the institutionalized uh, children. So, mebendazole is the most appropriate treatment in order to treat threadworm. Once more, doctor, these worms are bothering worms. There is a small table of helminthic infections, anti helminth of choice. Up in bar, up in geology, platy helminthus, nematy helminthus, which are threadworm, which are roundworm, which are pinworm, which is hookworm. So, the wormology ke liye, one half day, you try to, not half day, between lunch and evening coffee time in the library, post lunch session. Right? So, Nikal ke roz kuch topics banana. 10 topics banana, dosto ko bolna. Chalo bhai, today we will master the, these things when you go to reading room. Huh? So, uh, put it into the agenda of your one of the post lunch uh, sessions, this uh, worms, anti helminths, definitely it will be rewarding in the exam. In the same session, you also take which tools are bile soluble, which are not soluble, which will float, which will sink in the Saturated solution of uh, salt. That also you have to master. Okay. So don't tell others. Attending discussion, we will be told a lot of things to be remembered, and we can't remember all those things. Tension jada badega. No, no. The point is this is the time. The purpose of the Sunday test is to remind you what you need to read, did you read or not. That is the job I will be doing next 30 weeks. In the diagnosis of the rheumatic fever, major and minor criteria, you must be very sure how to make a diagnosis. Phallotetrology. In phallotetrology, there is a pulmonary oligemia, not plethora, because of the pulmonic stenosis. Plethora is high vascularity, oligemia is no vascularity. The prominent systolic murmur is due to PS, not due to VSD. PS is responsible. And the presentation is typically in the, um, invariably in the childhood, not in the late teens, is what you need to appreciate. Hurler versus Hunter. Hunter can see, Hurler cannot see. Hunter is X-linked, is what you need to remember. Then, uh, Urethritis, conjunctivitis, HLA, B27, what else is required? Urea, plasma, urelyticum, reactive arthritis, Reiter syndrome, etc, etc, you should remember. Actinitic keratosis lead to squamous cell carcinoma. Once more, steroids may, what is the level of strength? Hydrocortisone is the weakest one. Hydrocortisone, prednisone, prednisolone, dexamethasone, etc. So, if you take clobetasol propionate, it is the one which is most potent out of all. So, you must know relative potency of the, all these steroids, doctor. The table of Khatam uh, Karna. Pinch purpura. You pinch purpura will develop. Primary systemic amyloidosis. Then, dermatitis herpetiformis. The classical location is not flexor but extensor surface. You have got the dermatitis herpetiformis, grouped excoriations, papules with vesicles is what you typically come across. Halothane. Halothane is not a good analgesic but a good anesthetic is a very well known fact. Antinox is 50% oxygen, 50% nitrous oxygen, the combination. Then uh, etomidate. Next Sunday test I will ask you the cylinder colors pin index numbers, then I uh, will become more cruel after the next Sunday, Nagel circuits, which is more efficient, which is less efficient, so you can do everything, so you should score 150 out of 200 in this mock test doctor, definitely you will get seat.
you will be in the top fortune 100 club last uh, state md entrance in the first 100 ranks we have about 63 rankers among uh, our uh, mock test takers they were all taking mock tests like you but if you retrospectively analyze how was their scores some of them for some period of time they were getting 120 110 like that suddenly they picked up but after january whatever test that they took they were 145 plus there's a reason mock tests are the gold standard where you cross 150 you are in the top 100 club so for them august is the right time pick up those topics which you are going wrong identify why i am going wrong because these are all high yield topics ultimately examiner is also going to test more or less in a similar way right so we should become strong like a mountain whatever question comes from this that topic for example topics like uh, um, cerebrovascular accident brainstem stroke parkinsonism myasthenia gravis topics whatever the question you must be ready to face in them okay so like that now intermediate adrenocortical suppression it will lead to Malam Patti scoring to know whether before you do elective intubation is a pathway good or not. So doctor, one, two, three, four. So one is full visibility of the tonsils, uvula, soft palate. Two is visibility of the hard and soft palate, upper portion of the tonsils and uvula. And a soft and hard palate, base of the uvula is visible and only hard palate is visible. You have a fat cabinet minister ready to get operated. You are the first year MD anesthesia resident. Open the mouth, sir. Nothing is visible, sir. Only you can see hard pellet. So be very sure. Call your senior. Chalo. A flexible laryngoscope to use to intubate him. Right? So uh, that's the thing. Minimum alveolar concentration of sevoflurane. This kind of idiotic questions we will be asking because actual examiner also is idiot. He will also be asking idiotic questions. So mock test means we should mock like him. So sevoflurane is two, but don't remember this useless list. Electroconvulsive therapy. It is for acute schizophrenia, not chronic. Acute schizophrenia, psychotic individual. Lithium. Not for the generalized anxiety disorder, but those who are having neutropenia, vascular headache, major depression, any of those scenarios, we will be using the uh, lithium. Clozapine is an atypical antipsychotic. Extra pyramidal side effects will be lesser with clozapine, but more with typical antipsychotic like haloperidol. Why? Because if you take D1, D2, D1, D2, the clozapine selectively goes and affects D4 and doesn't affect D1. Anything that affects D1 will lead to extrapyramidal movement disorder. To treat psychosis, you need to actually block D4, D2, but not D1. Since it is selective to block D4 and D2, clozapine, without affecting D1, extrapyramidal side effects are lesser with clozapine. Is what you need to remember. Similarly, clozapine's all side effects. A granulocytosis of clozapine, clozapine, emeteron, lithium, digitalis, they are all the mukkoti devatas for the MD exam. You have to master everything about them. Clozapine, lithium, digoxin, uska mechanism of action, kya hai, uska side effects, rarest side effects also you must read and go to the exam. Right doctor? Now, Patient has altered consciousness, tremors and visual hallucinations. What is the probable diagnosis? Delirium tremens. Drug abuse with symptoms similar to schizophrenia. Wherever you take amphetamine, you develop paranoid psychosis. Similar to that of the schizophrenia is what you need to remember. In the bone scans, we will be using technetium and Frankel's line is a feature of scurvy, Wimberger's line, Frankel's line, etc, etc. Yesterday we had radiology subject test discussion, so we discussed most of them. 
basal ganglia calcification is a feature of hypo hyper both types of parathyroidism and also hypothyroidism okay doctor there is a big list of causes for basal ganglia calcification which you need to slowly master huh? now minimal pneumoperitoneum how can you identify if you take a left lateral decubitus with a horizontal beam you can make out even if the pneumoperitoneum is very minimal in a suspected case of peritonitis and rupture vertebra plana flattening of the vertebrae once more radiology is a subject of list of causes which you need to review now large bubble how do you do the anastomosis you use both one layer and also two layer technique both the techniques are used in order to manage so we'll finish surgery questions and call it a day today uh, i didn't prepare for all questions so until 140 we'll finish today everyone is in festival mode so but uh, the true festivity is in having an academic feast with you rather than uh, any other feast can give that sumptuous feeling so i thought at least 140 questions we will discuss next week onwards we will discuss all 200 not only 200 some